episode 37. We're here. We'll just start. We'll just start with the show for everyone on YouTube that watches. Oh, okay. This is since just you to, since you have to clip the music anyway. Since I have to clip the music anyways. Actually, mm-hmm. I might not. I might not for this one. But this is episode 37, Frag Logic. We're back uh, in action. Like I was saying, uh, we had a slow week last week. Uh, but this week we got a lot of stuff that kind of happened. We had the Steam controller video came out right after our show last week. We got the Xbox uh, Xbox One Friends app walkthrough with Major Nelson, which happened yesterday. We had um, uh, some other game announcement stuff. Obviously, Ubisoft delayed both. Not only not only did they delay Watch Dogs, which was announced today, but they also delayed the crew. Huge. Um, and then you know, there's a lot other little tidbits of information there as well. So uh colin what what'd you do this weekend what was what was uh i watched a bunch of streams there was some good tournaments this weekend uh so i watched uh starcraft finals with naniwa and uh help me uh life life thank you uh and naniwa kind of getting whooped up on <clears throat> but it was to be expected he made it to the finals which was sick uh, and then hopped over to the Dota stream to watch Navi against Alliance in the Star Ladder Finals, which was an amazing match. I watched it all, baby. And then I hopped over to the Gfinity Call of Duty tournament and attempted to watch, but the stream kept going down repeatedly, so I just turned it off. I didn't but, even attempt to uh, watch I, I caught that. some bits and pieces. So, uh, I mean, it was a really good weekend to watch tournaments, for sure. So, for tournaments, you didn't mention the uh, winners there. It was Navi. <clears throat> yeah. So now, going impressed. into MLG Columbus next month, there will be Alliance, who won TI3 a couple months ago. There will be Navi, who just won Star Ladder and beat Alliance in the finals. Yeah. And then you'll have DK, who's currently 12-0 and in Ace over in China uh, with their new super squad roster with a newly formed team. So, so did they make like an all-star team of Chinese players? Uh, well, they got Ice 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 from... Uh, I think he's from Singapore, actually. Uh, okay. and then they picked up Mushi, who's also from Singapore. Or, is it Singapore or Malaysia? Is Mushi uh, the one that played all Mushi of Mushi was on Orange. Yeah, he played all of those uh, champions, whatever they're yep. called. Yeah, okay. So they picked up him. Ice Ice, Ice my, was on Zenith. <laughs> listen to me. I know who I'm talking about now. Yeah. So, yeah. Basically, they, they have a super roster now uh, with Burning, Mushi, Ice Ice, Ice Lamin, and... Uh, XYY? I think that's right. So all of them will be at MLG Columbus, plus uh, the normal North American teams, uh, EG and Team Liquid and so on and so forth. And Fnatic, I think, is going to be there too. Okay. Does Fnatic have a good roster? <clears throat> They're okay. I, I mean, I'd say that any of them can win games. Uh, the favorites going into the tournament will definitely be Alliance, Navi, and DK, though. Okay. All right. Yeah. The yeah. bigger thing, though, Star Ladder had 400,000 concurrent viewers. Is that accurate? Yes, absolutely. There was 200-some on the Russian stream, 100-some on the Twitch stream, and 100-some in uh, Dota TV. And that's not counting. There's another, like, 50,000 on the Chinese streams. <clears throat> okay. Uh, and that was a tournament that wasn't organized by Valve in any way. Like, it wasn't... Which I think might be the most viewers for a non-developer-ran tournament. Like, that's just... That's, that is pretty insane. I don't. There's no tracking for that, but Riot stuff obviously always has been through that. Was the uh, was the tournament promoted in in the game client? Just the normal ticket stuff. So like you could buy a ticket. All the people okay. that were watching a game, the hundred some thousand viewers, bought a five dollar ticket to watch the tournament in game. Damn. So they probably made money on it because the prizes weren't really that great, but they were good. That is imp- very impressive. It's cool, because I think that the suspicion that a lot of people had was that you couldn't have a... Uh, like, they weren't going to be able to sustain as a league, or as a game, the game wasn't able to sustain leagues outside of the international, because the international was going to overshadow everything. Uh, but I think that kind of proved it wrong, at least initially. We'll see what happens when there's tons of tournaments like StarCraft have. StarCraft, yeah. yeah. Where it just was oversaturation. Which MLG is about to do. Yeah, I mean, part of it's like, China's pretty picky about which teams they'll let, which uh, tournaments they'll let their players go to because there's actually a professional league similar to Kespa over there. Right. Uh, so you have to get approval and all that stuff. Uh, it's actually pretty cool. They have a 
entire like signing process and they oversee roster moves and all that stuff uh, and make sure that contracts get transferred and it's a pretty cool situation but it also means they have to get approval from them to go to international tournaments so really the only international tournaments that will be prestigious are the ones that get the top Chinese teams out interesting well, uh, after watching that I mean I've been on and off watching Dota I've been more into Dota than I am in League as of right now and so I can actually watch and listen to a full match and be kind of kind of interested I, and I think it's because of Smite I still think I, like I was saying earlier like I can follow the games a lot easier because of Smite, Smite. whereas when I, I think when I initially started watching League I was like I don't get it it's lots so, of similar concepts across all of them yeah um so for me weekend games i only played one uh, i actually did a review of uh i don't have it in here it's actually hooked up to the, the playstation 3 but i did a review of avermedia's uh lot uh, not live yet. game capture hd2 what's up mr milky um and uh it's it's pretty cool i don't know if you had a chance to watch the review column but they can basically it's it's doing what the next gen systems are promising to do uh, except that you can have more video stored i guess maybe um so you can hook up an external hd or you can put in a, a 2.5 uh a sata sata hard drive and uh uh you can record your gameplay onto that and then you can edit inside of that and process the video through that device so um do like basic edits at first, you know, when I first thought about like the editing, I thought you could only edit like single clips, like you could highlight a clip, but it also, it, it actually does multi-trimmed editing within one video. So if you wanted to do a montage, uh, I mean, it's not going to be any, there's not going to be any music, but uh, you can kind of get around that. But uh, you can clip together all your clips. I'd say if you took an hour of footage, you can go through all of it. I would, I couldn't do that on that type of program, but you could clip all your clips together and then process it. I don't know how long that would take. Um, and then you can post it to YouTube through that thing. It actually hooks up to uh, a network. Do you edit it's, with like a controller you plug in, or is it you, you like uh, a keyboard mouse? They have a little remote control. Um, Kylan, she actually takes it and walks all around the house, and she's like pressing the buttons on it. It's like, it's like this... you have to clip things with this little tiny remote control. <laughs> it's, so they're it's doing some video bad. editing. It's not that bad. I promise you, it's not that bad. So really, it's like my first game recording program, essentially. Pretty much. Um, can you, live stream? you can't live stream, but it seems like they might offer that as an option through firmware, uh, because it just makes sense, right? I mean, if they have it hooked up to an Ethernet cable, why not live stream your gameplay? That it just makes sense, and you can put it overlays in on your videos from that. So it's like I was really impressed with it for only it's 170 bucks. So I spent my time uh, this weekend kind of going through that I mean, for the features. That's that's pretty damn good. I mean, yeah, it sounds like a lot of stuff that you obviously can do way better with Premiere or Premiere, right. any kind of video editing program. But if you don't have that software or you don't want to mess with taking the couple of hours it takes to learn how to use them, then... Flacco, what's up? Instead, uh, you want to sit there and use a four-button controller four to button. edit. No, listen, it's a remote control. <laughs> There's like 12 buttons on it. <laughs> uh, it's it's impressive. It's impressive for the price. Um but yeah, anyway, while I was testing this out, I played Dust514 this weekend. So I don't know how many of our guys uh, in the uh, chat that are watching or on YouTube have played Dust514, but it is a free-to-play uh, first-person... I mean, there's some MMO aspects of it, but it's massive multiplayer um, sort of uh, game that is on PlayStation 3's uh, network, uh, the PSN store. It's like three gigs, I think, to download... And uh, it's connected to the Tranquility server for EVE Online. So it's like the same universe within EVE Online and, and Dust514. And uh, I was, I mean, it's, the gameplay for it was kind of clunky. It didn't feel very tight. I don't know if, and I said this in the, my video that I did with it. I didn't know if it was the PlayStation 3 controller, like just felt weird. Or uh, the game is just very bad aim controls. I, I'm leaning towards the game just has very bad aim controls in conjunction with minorly that the I you know I just hate the PlayStation DualShock controller, but whew, 
My very first game, though, Colin. I went 23 and 4. <laughs> uh, enjoy free to play shooters. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, like, it was, just, it was just really frustrating trying to aim at people because you would see someone and I'd be like, okay, I, let me just just barely move it and then it would like throw my guy or throw the, the gun way off the guy and then i have to swing back and then i turn the sensitivity down and then it was like moving at a crawl and i was i was just really annoyed by it speaking um, of bad free-to-play games we have to try a uh, tactical intervention together I, I played it a little bit it's really really bad tactical intervention yeah it's free to play on steam from uh one of the guys who contributed to creating counter-strike was the uh big marketing push hmm. okay we'll have to try that out it's really tactical, tactical intervention it's really bad all right so that that was pretty much my weekend uh, consisted of reviewing a capture card um and uh playing dust 514 i also played little i i'll take that back i also played little big planet art racing <laughs> And, uh, I mean, I've played that before. I just haven't talked about it on the show. Uh, Christy actually made me buy that game for her for, like, Christmas last year or something like that. <clears throat> but I was testing that out as well. So, yep, that's, that was my, my weekend. Oh, I guess I guess I should also show this. Uh, let's... Uh, I got the Note. Samsung Note 3. Bought that. The Fablet. You realize it's just a blurry screen, right? Oh, is it really? Do I need to get up closer? It doesn't record well. That records pretty well. What are you talking about? Get out of here. Whose number are you showing? Was, oh, did I just show a number? <laughs> Blur, I'll have to, uh, it's it's hard to see. <laughs> yeah, there it is. <laughs> Do I like the phone? Yeah, it's, it's pretty nice. That was Carrington's number, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, man. If you guys text him, be like, hey, your brother said, tell you hi. If anybody oh, can God. decipher that number. Go ahead. I, you have my permission. Pretty sure he'd respond by just, like, blowing up his phone. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, that was that was the weekend for me. Let me see. Which this property. And let's go ahead into Ubisoft delays. This was surprising, right? Last minute I surprising on, on both too. Both accounts, it was surprising. Both games. Yeah, I mean they've already started the marketing push for Watch Dogs. Right. I mean this is huge. Like it's a really the, expensive delay. The reason why this is right. The reason why this is so huge is. In my opinion, is because not only is it expensive, probably on the development side of it, but they marketed this with Xbox Ones and PS4s. Like you could pre-order your consoles with this game, and now, uh, let me see, a month from launch for PS4, uh, you can't get the game. Like, what are, are they going to insert another game? Like. They're gonna be like, okay, sorry guys, no watchdogs. Here's Knack. <laughs> They'll probably just offer you the like Killzone bundle instead. Okay, all right. So here's Killzone. Actually, I imagine they'll let you select from them. Is how Amazon would usually handle it. Although there was limited supply, so I don't know. I I mean, and GameStop has to honor it as well, so they have to do something too. Yeah. I imagine Best Buy might be on the hook as well. Uh, but the two that I saw in the article that I read was GameStop and Amazon are figuring out what they're going to do. Uh, they didn't say anything about Best Buy or wherever else you might have pre-ordered it. But I mean, a month before a month before the game comes out. That said, you would have expected the game to be gold right now. So I wonder like, if they just realized they weren't even fucking close. Maybe? I don't know. I mean, I'm just. I think most people that are buying the consoles right now are probably gonna buy a couple games. Like, you're not only gonna get one game, unless you just buy a PlayStation Four and you're like, I'm gonna play play all the free to play games, and then you might be good. <laughs> you got like four, so that are solid. But other than that, I mean, that's that's pretty big. So the other one that they delayed, in addition to Watch Dogs, again, this came out I think the same day, is The Crew. 
That that came out of nowhere. That game Which is again even... was a big game they're using to push the PS3. Yeah, it's not even it's not even in the launch lineup. It's a Q1 game, which I guess is in launch window, but it's coming out after holidays. So that's like, what's that? What's Q1? January to March, whatever. I think end of March is uh, the end of that quarter. I think uh, it's, it might be like March 21st. They come out until April. Oh, do they? Just okay. the way it, fiscal. Okay, so um, they're they're rolling the crew to mid. Did they say mid? They said mid mid 2014. Man, oh man, that's just like that. Those are some. I mean, those are two disappointing delays. The Watch Dogs one hurts a lot because of the time frame, and their both of their marketing responses on this has been that they want to make sure it's the best gameplay experience possible for people out there, which I don't doubt. But you think they were having some trouble? That's the line to say whenever you delay a game. Yeah, obviously. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, it's hard to say. We can't possibly know. Like I say, it seemed like Watch Dogs was ready to go based on the marketing push, the amount of gameplay they've shown. Like, I can't remember the many games have just shown, like, finished gameplay sequences in-game as demos and then not published on time. Especially when they were showing stuff, like, a month ago. <laughs> so, I, I don't know. I, I'm in disbelief. That was one of the games I actually had on my uh, radar. Like, yeah, I had my, my another argument list. for not getting the consoles at launch uh, if you were going to wait. Yeah, I mean... Uh, just because there's not going to be that many great games out at launch, really. There's not. There's really not. And that was... I mean, it's going to hurt both consoles, really. Um, not having a game like this. Or, hell, even the crew in this launch time frame. Uh, I think crew hurts PlayStation specifically. It was a PlayStation exclusive. It's a PlayStation that. exclusive. I'm pretty yeah. sure. So they're going to be hurting for a while. So you know, I'm, I'm sure all the of the Xbox One fanboys are going to be like, "Oh, we got Forza. You guys got nothing." Ah. <laughs> I, I mean, I guarantee that's going to go on for a little while. So uh, I, I mean, I'm hoping that they have maybe... Drive Club at launch, right? Maybe. Maybe it's not a launch title. Hold on. I can't remember which one I played. I think I played Drive Club, but I don't know if that was yeah. a launch title. Drive Club's a launch title. Is it? Okay. Okay. So they still got they got Drive Club. Okay, you guys are good. PlayStation is <laughs> is good. They're all the same anyways, right? Maybe we got those two confused then. Drive Club is the exclusive and then the crew is both platforms. Yeah, the crew is all platforms. Okay. Alright. Whew. They're all the same. They're all the same. Well, all the racing sims? Yeah. Come on, dude. Well, crew that. and drive club aren't really racing sims, but yeah. Just later. <laughs> They're seriously the same games. The hey, cars might change slightly. The what what type of game do you, you want? You want to play what I what I what trail I told you to watch? Angry Birds Go. That's what ah, I'm talking about. That's where it's like, at. Uh, stuff like Blur. And Wipeout? It's a little bit different. Wipeout, blur, yeah. Blur and Wipeout? That's, that's fucking Angry Birds Go. What are you talking about? Why are you hating on Angry Birds Go? <laughs> it's You're exactly hater, Mario Kart. <laughs> it is. It's Mario Kart. Blur isn't exactly Mario Kart. Yes, it is. It's, it's very close. <laughs> it's very, very close. <laughs> So that's that's a, what's up with Ubisoft. I'm uh, I'm really interested uh, to kind of see what the YouTube comments are going to be like. But I can already tell in chat like a lot of you guys are pretty disappointed uh, with with that. So um, I mean, there's not really much more to say there, other than fuck. They they really kind of <laughs> screwed some people over. Got those pre-orders. Yeah, I mean, it's I said the biggest thing is just not wanting to get consoles at launch as a result. Uh, Battlefield's really the only major AAA. Call of Duty Ghosts. Sorry, and COD. Which? I, so I thought about a new series I'm gonna have for Call of Duty Ghosts because I'm gonna get the game. I always get the Call of Duties just to play it for a little while. But I'm gonna I'm gonna name the series like it's gonna be something like 
a caveman can do it. And then that's that's gonna be my tagline for it. And it's gonna be like a short blurb, and then I'm gonna let gameplay roll. So feel free to steal that idea so we can spread it. Caveman can do it. So <coughs> easy. Caveman can do it. That was already uh, a... What? That was a series? Someone did that? That was a... Uh, fucking, was it Geico? I know. It was Geico. Okay. But now I'm doing it for Call of Duty. That's you can't where... do that. Yes, I can. I can do that. Totally. Uh, where... Where do you want to go now? Oh, I'm going to go to Battlefield uh, Obliteration. Because I played that. I want to talk about it a little bit. Okay. I didn't look at it, so... I actually but, had... Is that the random bomb spawning game type? Okay. It's not as random... As you're trying to make it sound, Mister. I just I said random bomb gaming. No bomb gaming spawn type. You had a little bit of sarcasm in your voice when you said that, sir. That was how it was described to me initially. Battlefield obliter Battlefield Force Obliteration game mode. For those of you guys that haven't seen my video that came out today, or haven't seen anything on the game mode, it is a neutral bomb, multi objective game type. It is a large scale. I'm. I'm assuming that they're going to have 64-man servers uh, for the beta that's played 16 versus 16 on Siege of Shanghai's large version, so it was absolutely ginormous. Um, but the bomb spawns in a general area randomly. randomly. And in so this case, it was the Random the, <laughs> bomb spawning. In this time. case, it was the middle of the map. So that whole island? By the building, yeah. The so, whole I mean, island? The middle of the map. Colin, there's not that much ground to cover there. <coughs> Unless Why can't they the... just have it always spawn in the rubble or in the bridge. Because the fights would be ridiculously stupid. Trust me, you wouldn't want it to sp like based on how the game mode plays. You wouldn't want it to be in one spot all the time. Okay, be... so, so if you fail to arm the bomb, what happens? You fail to arm the bomb in terms of like you get a defusal. As in, like, you walk over there and you can't arm it because they either grab it or defuse it. So if they defuse, I believe the bomb actually stays in your hands. So if, like, they defuse, your te the, the team that defused gets the bomb, then they have to drive all the way over to your base to get it. It doesn't reset. Okay, so it's literally just neutral bomb? Literally just neutral bomb. The only time the bomb resets is if you successfully arm and destroy a, a, an objective. So in order to win, you have to uh, destroy all three on one of the in, in, uh, enemy team's bases. Um, so once you get all those, then the uh, then the match will end. You can also win by timing out. So uh, let's say you get two, the other team gets one, the team that gets two is gonna win. Um, the only thing I thought was like kind of crazy is that the freaking bomb always shows like if you're a foot unit and this was bothering the hell out of me i played like six games of obliteration you always show on the map and there's just too many people <laughs> like if you're trying yeah. to walk somewhere really there's stealthy, no chance you can walk it there's no chance like you have to get into a vehicle in order to be successful like you can't stealth bomb uh stealth arm rather uh the bomb at any any site so that, that was the one thing i didn't particularly like i i kind of in my video i said i wish it would kind of ping like you know it every five seconds or every three seconds. I felt like that would make it better. Or hell, do multi-bomb, like have multiple bombs. If you're gonna make the maps that big, having one seems just like you're shooting at one goo. <laughs> like, I mean, there was times when I had a chopper just shooting at me. Like I couldn't do anything because there was a, just a chopper shooting at me because he knew where the bomb was and I was going for the bomb, so. <clears throat> you teamwork. Yeah, I, there, I mean, teamwork is really apparent there, so. <clears throat> Here's a story. There was one, um, there was one game I played where I grabbed the bomb and it spawned at the top of uh, C building uh, for for conquest. I did a base jump off the building to where this dude was on the jeep in the middle that middle bridge area, middle island, and uh, I kind of overshot him a little bit. But I ran back and kind of turned towards him. And next thing I know, the jeep is like right in my face, and he's honking. He's like honk honk, and he wasn't in my squad, so he's honk honk honk. Hon. So I hop in, we roll over to, uh, I think it was C or D, C, D, E over there. It might have been D. And uh, got the, no, it was E, because he rammed into the building. So I flew out, armed it, and uh, that actually won the game. So uh, people, people that pay attention 
to what's going on and that are trying to win, like those are the guys you want to be in your squad. Yeah, the other bigger issue is half people on the server are just sitting on a rooftop yeah. killing because it's otherwise you're playing like with idiot. idiots. Like there's people sniping, like playing against snipers on there. There's dudes up on buildings because you can drop parachute in. So there's dudes sitting up on buildings just sniping away, just like. I mean, I'm sure it helps every once in a while, but nine times out of ten, sniping is probably the worst <laughs> thing you could do in obliteration. Absolute worst. Um, but I, I think it's I think it has legs. I think you would kind of enjoy it if we were all in a squad, like me, you, Fobo, Danny, or uh, Fobo, Danny, Sean, Mitch. Is that four or five? That's four. Four. And we got a fifth. That'd be fun. It'd be fun. Okay, Sean. He said sniping is greater. Dude, you would not be sitting up on a building just being an idiot like I saw people doing. Like, there was a dude that sat up on one building all game. And finally, Meta Knight, who I was playing with, uh, he hopped onto the building. Like, he base jumped onto the building and killed him. And uh, then we hopped off and, like, went about our business. But, like, just stupid. Stupid. That's right, though. That 5v5 Counter-Strike mode will really, uh, will really save it. No. no what? That was your... <laughs> yeah, I know. That's what you said. You said it was. <laughs> what you, no, I no. What you listen, believe in listen. a slightly sarcastic manner. Yeah, I know. That's that's why I said no, because... <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, listen. I, I think the game type has legs. I think there's a couple things that can make it a little bit better. And one of the comments on the video, which was funny enough, someone was like, because I mentioned diffuse and like bomb <laughs> game types in general, uh, I was just mentioning those as like a, a segue into obliteration because it's, you know, essentially based off of bomb game types. And uh, the guy was like, there's no reason to have these suggestions to try to make it more competitive. It's just, for, you know, it's just going to be random pub stars in there. And I was like, well, I didn't really, I wasn't really making those suggestions to make it competitive. It's just, I felt like it would just be a better game mode if it had those things in. So, um, I, I mean, I don't really think the game type it itself is going to be very competitive just by the nature of how it works but i mean maybe it could be i just think that the game would play better if it had a couple of those things in there so yeah that was that experience colin you might like it and you won't like it more than conquest but you might like it a little bit you like it more than rush conquest is much it's stale better. oh no. much better uh, conquest is going. battlefield i wouldn't say anything yeah. else is... conquest is battlefield I think you would like it more than Rush. Rush sucks. Yeah, I didn't yeah. like Rush. I think you would like it more than Rush. Because it has the same issues as Rush, though. Like, it just stalls out. Potentially. I didn't just play from, against really good teams. Just from teams. your description of what some people in chat are saying and what I can kind of see yeah, how it happened. Like, like, if the bomb gets into a spot when you just don't want to score like you're already up to, you can just keep it from grabbing it. Right. So there, there's some potential for that, for sure. <clears throat> uh, <coughs> let me see here. Let me go ahead and switch this to... Steam controller in action? Yeah. Once again, video comes out right after our show. Is it because we were talking about this? Is because we were kind of... We were expressing our it? doubts that they just whipped up a video in the early hours of Wednesday. So let's go ahead and go to that video. A gameplay video that shows how the controller is used in a number of different types of games. So we have some first-person shooters, some strategy games, um, and some other just mouse pointer type games. Um, we're going to try and put together um, these updates pretty frequently. So if you have any questions about what you're seeing here, about any other types of games you'd like to see, um, go ahead and let us know in the comments. So the first game we're going to show you is Portal 2. Um, one of the most important features of the controller is that the two trackpads are fully configurable. What we're showing here is what we call legacy mode, which is playing a game that hasn't been modified at all to support the controller. So this is just standard keyboard and mouse style uh, Portal 2. But the controller is acting like a mouse and keyboard and um, is mapped to output keyboard events that Portal expects. Since the two trackpads can be configured independently, we use the right hand pad here to do a one-to-one -one view control mode. Um, it's important to distinguish between a, like a joystick, which does a relative or velocity-based movement, and this one-to-one -one mode where we can directly move your thumb a fixed amount of distance on the pad and the view will correspond with the fixed amount of distance. 
at the same time, the left pad is configured like a D pad where it's divided up into pie shaped segments where up and down is the W and S keys and left and right are the A and D keys. So you can walk around like you would with a, a walk joystick. You are not alone. All aperture signs the next game we wanted to show you is Civilization V. Um, this is a great game for playing on the couch, but um, in the past it's been pretty difficult unless you wanted to prop a keyboard in your lap. So the way we have the controller bound for this game is on the left, the D-pad is set up to control the camera using the arrow keys, and the right pad is uh, a one-to-one -one mouse pointer. The bottom buttons are bound to zoom in and zoom out, so along with the left pad arrow keys, it makes for a very fluid way to zoom around the map and zoom in and look at your unit. Here I'm using the grab button to just grab the train directly and push it around using the one-to-one -one mouse control. Um, this is a run through the training course to kind of show the precision capabilities of the track pads. One of the neat things about the controller is that it allows you to play first-person shooters without any kind of auto-aim turned on. Yeah. So the first me. game we're going to show you is Portal 2. Um, one of the most important. That was really That's... awful. I tried. I tried. Some, that was some awful production value. Uh, see, this is this is what what's his, what's his name? You going to segue into that? <laughs> <laughs> I prefer not to. Okay. Okay. I, I initially wanted to, but I'll, I'll let it go. It's not worth it. Not worth it at all. Uh, it's terrible. I can't show that. Why is that video not showing? I've done it before. I don't know. You... I did it with the Destiny trailer. When we showed the Destiny trailer, it was fine. That's upsetting to me. <laughs> Anyways, I put the video link in chat. Uh, my initial impressions were that, again, like they chose two FPS scenarios which don't involve shooting things on the move, so like you have time to line up your shots and shoot. Uh, it seemed reasonably good, uh, but it was nothing that couldn't be done without a controller um, just as well, if not better. Uh, the one thing they did notice that they didn't have auto aim on or anything, but again, they were like literally st standing still, lining up a shot, and then shooting for every single example they gave uh, on the shooter end. Yeah, for Civ, it looked really good, like being able to Civ, pan the camera really easily. Civ looked really good. Shooter aspect, I had this exact same kind of feeling as you, is like they're not really showing off if this thing can actually track people or not. So that was my only gripe about the shooter. Civ, yeah, panning for sure looked pretty damn good, and I don't think it would go that smoothly if you had a controller. Oops. Shit. Oh, Colin. Uh, uh. Colin. Yeah, we're good. We're good. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so... That... <laughs> I'm still in the cracker box. <laughs> Another week or so. <laughs> <laughs> that tense. Call him out. I had to get the Call car. The, the car. Call him out in the chat, you guys. Look at that production value from Colin. Fogel. The car and rent took priority. On the cracker box. It'll come soon. Colin, I don't know if I could I could hand over the production value over to you, man. You're still on the, the cracker <laughs> box, dude. <laughs> I at least pulled out some Gotham Imposters gameplay live a couple weeks ago or a month ago. Same. Uh, we could do that. I could do that right now if I wanted to. Well, yeah, you just switch over to the other panel. It doesn't have frag logic on it. Yeah. That's not really live. <laughs> That's live. <laughs> Anyways, I want to see Super Meat Boy being played. I want to see. Someone playing like a Counter Strike actual competitive server. I want to see 
you know, like stuff that actually stresses it. Uh, like maybe someone plays StarCraft or something, you know, like just right. something that would show that you can do difficult tasks with it, and then I'm sold. And even if that means having someone like us play with it for a couple play weeks in order to get to a point where we can feel competent, uh, which is, I expect that's kind of how it's going to, that's what's going, what it's going to take, you know. Yeah. Uh, but like, I feel like that's necessary for that for me to be impressed without having it in my hands. I really, really, really want to play this on a couple games that support it, like so bad. Um, I would like to play a couple shooters. I wonder if CS:GO is going to be able. To, I would imagine so. I want to play it on CS:GO just to yeah, see. Yeah, I mean they had it in the thing. It was just the training room. Right. Um, I want to see it on. Uh, What's another really fast-paced game that I don't think there's too many on Steam? See someone rocket it on Quake. I would like to see someone play it on Quake just to see. I don't know. Maybe even Loadout. Throw that out there. <laughs> that would be a good one. There's some, some Loadout love for all for all you guys out there. Uh, so... Right now, like you said, you're not all, all the way sold. What do you think the price point of it would be where no matter if you were sold or not, you would buy it? For the controller? For the controller. Uh, like 99 for me. I'd, I'd be willing to pay 100 just because it's something different. I think the, their mass market price needs to be around 50. I would I'm go... Not sure if they dual touch pads and a touch screen. Yeah, I, I don't see them hitting that price point at all. I would... I would go about 80. I don't know about 100, dude. You met Mad Cat's MLG controller was $100, and I wouldn't spend $100 on that. And I don't know. Like, they were trying to tote it <laughs> as, like... Dollar daily. No, it sucks so bad. Like, they were trying to tote that one as a $100 controller, and after seeing it, like... I, I don't know if I can sink $100 into a controller at this point in time. Like, 80... I should have it. I pay 100 strictly because I'm an enthusiast of controllers. You know what I mean? Like, that's... Like my appeal would be that I can also sit there and mess with the tuning of it and the software and the things uh, since it's open source. Okay. So like, that's the appeal for me. What, what about you guys in chat? What what price point do you guys feel like would be okay? Or would you want to try it first? Since I think that's probably the most common response I've seen. It's less okay. people want to try it. Try it first or price point? Seventy nine, ninety nine, fifty nine, sixty, sixty to eighty, forty, forty. Woo! It's not gonna be forty. Pretty much guarantee it won't be forty. Sweet chin with the forty out of. What what's a what's a forty dollar controller that's out right now? The Xbox wired? Wired. wired? Yeah. That's is it forty? I think it's forty. I think it's thirty nine ninety nine. Yeah. Obviously, you can get it for like thirty. Seventy nine ninety nine is too much. I don't know. I mean, I'm also looking at buying a scuff, so since I don't have one. Are you serious? Just considering it. Again, as a controller enthusiast for Xbox One. Once they get their Xbox One controller up, unless the Xbox One controller is sick, we'll see. <laughs> hey guys, the Xbox One controller is not sick. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and move on to uh, Xbox One friends. Then we're gonna just hit a bunch of miscellaneous stuff. Since that video did not work, I had it loaded up. <laughs> How about we just, I'll just post the link. Back. How about that? I don't actually, Colin, can you grab that link? <laughs> sure. Wait. Actually, you don't have it in chat. I can grab Which it. Which one is it? From... You just want the Xbox One and Friends one? Yeah. I got it. Oh, damn it. So, Five in a second if you want to start. <laughs> okay, yeah. So uh, Major Nelson 
who's, who's funnily enough, he's the one doing all of these walkthroughs. Uh, but he showed off the Friends app, is what they're calling it, I guess, uh, on Xbox One, which is basically just your friends list. Uh, there, there's a couple of things that I saw in there that were particularly interesting. Um, a couple of them uh, were ones I wanted to see more on the, on the actual friends feed, uh, like the main screen. Um, it had your feed of what all your friends' activities were doing. That's like a real-time stream. On the left side of the screen, uh, it was like my profile, your follows, your friends, uh, your settings. And then at the bottom of that was game DVR. Did you catch that? Yeah. So that was one thing I was pretty interested in say, uh, seeing. And then on the uh, the feed itself, they showed a couple status uh, uh, updates that said something like upload or recently recent activity was like upload studio, which uh, as he That's panned like over YouTube, to YouTube sounds yeah, like. yeah, which makes I'm not sure I'm hoping I'm, I'm so so hoping that you can share your clips to YouTube and they don't do their own thing in inside the game or inside the uh, system itself like I wish they were just overlapped like if I upload something to YouTube it would be also on Xbox whatever with the same I, I wouldn't mind that I just I just don't want it to be walled garden you're only going to have upload studio as the only place you can upload your videos that Are would they be have a YouTube at launch I can't remember if it was PlayStation that delayed that or if it was Xbox That would be a very shitty experience they said there will be YouTube integration, but not at launch. So that means we're going to have the yeah, that's upload right. studio. Okay. Thank you, Elite. Um, but yeah, I mean, those were the things that were kind of hidden in there that he didn't talk about. The game DVR and the upload studio that I caught. And I was like, ooh, I can't wait to hear more about those. But I mean, the friends list basically function or friends app functions just like you would think it would. Uh, I believe it was uh, CMK0121 on Twitter. Uh, it was Chris Keaton who watches the show, uh, but he uh, mentioned that the favorites thing. So let's say you have your friends list, and you have a thousand people on your on your friends list, and you don't want to sift through all of them. And you have your favorites, which could be like a key group of players. Um, so like I would put Colin in there. I wouldn't put Tents. I'm, I'm just playing Tents. I put Tents in there. Sean, <laughs> uh, you know, all my all my buddies would be my favorites. And so, like, you can access that uh, list really quickly. And uh, I thought that was pretty cool. Now, Chris's suggestion was to segment it and make it so that you could uh, <laughs> mm. you could uh, have groups or lists based on the game that you play. So if you have a thousand friends, you could be like, oh, these are the Gears guys. This is the Battlefield crew. This is the, uh, the uh, what are they, Rise, Son of Rome crew. Um, <laughs> I thought that would be really cool. It reminded me of Google Circles and uh, kind of, you know, segmenting based off of groups. I think that would be a really awesome way to kind of sift through and, and make your friends list a lot better. Uh, he also showed that you could search a name in the list, uh, which, did they have that function in Xbox 360? You can't search your, uh... your existing friends. You can sort, I think online offline but i don't think you can search so well, that was new i mean there's really no need because you only have 100 right um and the other thing that i thought was really cool at least from my interaction from a, being a youtuber i think it's pretty cool is that they have the follow uh button or whatever you can follow people that you're interested in following to kind of see what they're doing um and it's a way to and this is what I, I'm saying in my upcoming video I have. Uh, it's, it's like a way to break the ice. Like, I don't want to send this dude a friend request, but I, I kind of want to keep tabs on him. So let me just, let me just send him a follow. Um, you know, people kind of like, you know, you get those messages like, will you accept my friend request, please? Sounds or, like it sends a friend request anyways from what they were saying. It sounds um, like you send a friend request and if the person declines, it just puts you on the follow list. That could be. But in order to make it mutual, at least uh, to signify that you're actually a friend, if someone follows you, they're in your followers. And then in order to uh, have them become a friend, like you can check your followers. And then if you follow that person back, then you uh, become friends. So two mutual follows uh, make you a friend. That's all it takes list. to make friends. That's all it takes. Just got to follow two people. Just got just got to follow back, and then you, and then you have yeah. a friend. So that's that's pretty much how it works. But the reason I like it is because 
once my friends list taps out like let's say all of the youtube subscribers on the amazing mlg would use that one the amazing mlg sent us a friend request that was what six thousand people obviously we're not going to be able to play with everyone subscriber sunday was a good situation where the friend friends list limitations made it difficult for me to kind of play with other people that were interested in doing that and so i think for people that are really interactive with like their subs or their twitch followers or whatever i think that's a good way to kind of get them involved and uh, uh interacting with 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 what you're doing so that was the only reason i thought it was cool other than that maybe breaking the ice maybe I'm not sure but uh it's pretty basic stuff i mean it's just a lot of social, yeah. social integration from existing social media twitter facebook google plus i saw another video that said they're trying to do a lot more with reputation now uh but i'm still pretty skeptical that it's going to matter considering how easy it was to get five stars and uh or or get the previous. download it because you're better than a lot of pe- people and then it yeah. puts you in shitty yeah that's I'm not, I don't have very high expectations for that. I think we actually talked about it May, whenever that unveil was, when they talked about the reputation system and how it right. works. I, I think it's going to be terrible. I think everyone's going to be maxed out again. Uh, like, I don't expect it to be an issue. I'm going to ask. I mean, hell, like, my... the only time that I remember people using it was when everyone had people report each other for bad gamer tags so they can get free gamer tag changes. Like, that's the only time I remember reputation being used. Yeah. Like, if you get 15 reports or whatever, then it lets you change your gamer tag. Yep. And in some cases, Abram, if if you had some very nasty stuff on your account, I mean, you had to have a lot. You could get your account banned. I do remember that happening, at least on Gears of War, the first one. Um, I remember that happening to a couple people. And I remember people used to ask, hey, can you uh, submit a report on my account? You remember people used to ask for that? Yeah, that's what I was saying. They used to do that just so they can get tag changes. Yeah, yeah. Was it 15? I, th- I think it was like 10 or 15 was all it took. And it, 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 hold, it had to be at once, too. It wasn't like... I'm not sure. I think it, it, it was for gamer tags. So. I think it had to be at once. Yeah, Pretty I don't know. sure. You had to get a flood of them all at the same time. And then that would prompt. It seemed pretty reliable, though, because I saw people doing it all the time. Yeah. So I, I think I'm really concerned about the reputation system. I agree. I think it's going to be kind of faulty. Um, it looked like a... Uh, it's like a ring now, at least from what they showed. Uh, no, the it's like a uh, uh, like pressure gauge. Oh, okay. So it's just like an arc, and then it fills up. Okay, that makes sense. Um, I I can't think of anything else that I really saw in that video that uh, was impressive to me. Um, I think I, I you know I walked away with it like yeah. I, there's a couple things I think I would really be able to utilize, but for the most part, all of this is expected. The, the the really thing that the interesting thing that I'm really waiting for I should say is that PlayStation hasn't really shown theirs at least from what I've been watching. So I want to see where there's overlap. I'm sure it was in there. Did you uh, see? Cause... I haven't seen Sony's. I don't. At least I they haven't showed seen it during the. Uh, they showed it during the one cheesy video where like they were getting together to play. Remember that one? Yeah, there was one video showing the dash. I don't know if there was anything as far as like reputation goes or any of that stuff, but it was it was again all expected stuff. Okay. It's looked better than PS3, uh, which I think wasn't that much of a social platform. <laughs> no, but it, it wasn't. wasn't meant to be a social oh, at all. I was thrown together, pieced together. Um, so a couple tidbit things that that, that we kind of missed in some previous shows. So I'll, I'll put this as miscellaneous. Uh, I'm gonna let you go ahead and talk about Project Spark. Uh, yeah, I talked about a bunch on the show, but there's no... They announced this week, actually via a reply on Reddit, uh, one of the guys over at uh, the Project Sparks, I can't remember what it's called for some reason, uh, but they said there's no gold membership required to play, which makes it entirely free to play. Uh, and you'll be able to play people's games for free without a gold membership, which is pretty cool. Uh, that was pretty much it. They've just been doing more and more streams, as I talked about last week, showing off the game. Hmm. They did say going from alpha to beta, you might end up losing the stuff you make uh, just because it's a big update. I don't understand how the creation community, I don't, game, what do you call those guys? What is the Minecrafter? What are they, what is their official titles? 
You, I, I would call them modders, but is that really what they are? Yes, modders. The mod community hasn't like blown up over Project Spark. I, I'm just baffled right now, based yeah. off of what and I've been know. shown. I think it's one of those things where it's once it's out in the wild, it'll blow up really quickly. That's uh, what I'm expecting. I mean, I don't. I'm just blown away. Like, you know, I told you earlier. It's like I am surprised that that. The dev streams that they're doing, at least when they're uploaded to YouTube, how has the Minecraft community not latched onto that and been like, oh my god, I can't wait to play this fucking game. It looks awesome. Yeah, the only ones I, I've seen, I've seen a few away. guys that I recognize from the Halo Forge community um, here and there. But for the most part, again, there's hardly anyone. There's like one or two posts to the Reddit, which they consider like their public forum kind of right now. Right. Uh, Reddit slash Project Spark game. Um, and then the YouTube videos only have like 400 views, 100 500 views. views. Uh, I'm blown away. So I'm surprised it hasn't blown up yet, but I think that that's a sleeper game that's just going to get huge really quickly. Especially because they said alpha to beta, they're going to lose a lot of the games. Um, but going from beta to launch, they want basically everything to continue working. So when the game is released officially, it's going to have this huge amount of content already on day one. Right. Now, one thing I think you mentioned that may hurt it a little bit is that the windows 8 thing uh could yeah. potentially be an issue i personally don't want to play it on windows 8 i don't even want windows 8 to touch my pc at all i'm gonna pick it up just like so because it's that's the only way to be in the alpha beta alpha, in the alpha beta damn uh they said they'll do something with xbox later but they aren't ready yet so the initial thing will be just on windows Man. which sucks but I might have I think to that the biggest I might population is going to be on Xbox and Xbox. Xbox One. Yeah, I agree. Strictly because of that. Like, if it was on Windows 7, then I think you get a lot more people. But Now, for everyone that um, has played Minecraft on the 360 when it released on the dashboard or whatever in and, and that um, Xbox Live Arcade, that was one of the most played, and still to this day probably is, games on, on Xbox Live in terms of activity. Just absolutely bonkers. So you're talking about a game that requires no gold uh, membership, completely free to play, and it's going to basically do what Minecraft does. I think there's a, I think there's a lot of it does, it does way more than Minecraft does. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think it, it'll be absolutely huge. So that's why I'm just baffled right now that people aren't all over this game right now. Just Minecrafters. You know what? This reminds me of the old guys continue just playing what they know. Being interested in what they know. Don't even give a fuck about anything else. Mm -hmm. oh, like I said, I think all it's going to take is a few different gameplay videos of stuff made in Project Spark before people go nuts. Especially <laughs> the multiplayer. Like, Personally, I'm excited to create a few like really simple kind of multiplayer games and then just throw them up there on YouTube, you know, and just see yeah. what, can, what, can, what you can do around it. Oh, there's no spectator mode? Just fucking make one, you know what I mean? Like, you, as a competitive player, you can't really complain because really if there's any issues, you can just fix it. Right. We'll and see. then as long as the tools are there to build communities around it, you can have all sorts of mini communities similar to, like, Halo 2 custom games. Uh, people playing, like, Cops and Robbers and all that stuff that required, like, player moderation. And now you have an actual platform for that. Could be cool. I'm, I'm, I have a lot of high hopes for this. You know, the thing that I was so, so impressed with was the mocap. Like, that's all I keep talking about. I just <laughs> want to mocap. mocap. That's all I can focus on. Like, once you told me that, I was like, oh, I got, I got to get this game just so I can mocap. <laughs> um, all right, let's see. We got Warface coming October 21st. Uh, you played the beta, I believe. Yep. It's ripped, not bad. Up, ripped up uh, your, your clan leader. Yeah. Made him quit. <laughs> and now I got booted. <laughs> uh, booted from the server by my clan leader. It's messed up. Got booted from the server because you ripped him up. Uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. I think I would check out that game strictly to see how slick their browser stuff is because it's really good. Okay. I, I, pl I plan on playing it. Like every free to play game I've been all over here. So October 21st, Warface, everybody that is on my YouTube uh, channel, if you guys are on Twitch, whatever. I had that game. Uh, it reminds and... me a lot of Ghost Recon Online without uh, the abilities. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and then add in like a uh, co-op horde mode. Yeah, I saw. I saw the devs in Warface got in trouble uh, with the female player. <laughs> now, 
in I, Russia. I read the, I, yeah, I read the article. It's, it's in two locations, Russia and China. So those, and they said it was they only designed it that way because uh, the was players, the yeah, basically said that they wanted that. So they took player feedback and said, yeah, why don't you do this? And they said it was way worse. Uh, the suggestions were way worse than what they actually did, went with. So yeah, so it's like there's all these guys in military uniform, and then the female is like in a skimpy. skimpy top. Yeah, I mean, whatever. They're trying to push. <laughs> they're trying to push units to their target demographic. I get it. Russia and China would be all down for someone in a panda costume. Like that's just China. how those markets are. China for sure. Panda costume in Russia? I it would work. Okay. I okay. You said so. make it like a, a drunken panda costume. I don't know, like. It seems like the free to play games which are successful over there are the ones which are doing things that are way over the top in terms of the customization. Is offensive combat blowing up over there? I don't know if they've targeted over there. Like, I know the big one over there, obviously, is uh, uh, Crossfire. Crossfire, yeah. But they do lots of similar stuff with the mods. All right. Next thing I'm, I'm going to switch to, Colin, I don't know if you clicked the link to this, but uh, <laughs> my my uh, thing with this, I saw the, the video on it, and I just shook my head. So this is a basically challenger to the Oculus Rift, if you will. A uh, new VR thing that shines light into your eyeball. Literally, into your eyeball. And uh, basically will project an image in there using mirrors and all this stuff. And obviously, like, one of the first questions that this guy asked him, I think it was on CNET or something like that. Uh, he's like, so it seems like there's a lot of concern about uh, the safety of this. And the guy's like, yeah, 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 you know, we, we thought about that too. Don't worry, our whatever guy, it's like our, our chief engineer or whatever, he's a really smart guy. We think we figured it out. We use, <laughs> we don't use infrareds. We use low, what do you say, low level light or low something light. Uh, so it should be fine. And uh, I'm just kind of concerned, like, I don't want to, I don't want to burn my eyeballs out with this, but I, I thought I would post that this week because I just thought it was fucking hilarious <laughs> to have something like that, like, I don't know. It just seems really spacey. What's weird is how can they market that? I don't know. It's like, trust us, the picture is great. <laughs> you can never show anything. You know what I mean? Right. You're never going to be able to show it off. It's just like, I don't know. It's like, this is cool. <laughs> it's so cool you can't even see it. <laughs> the comments of the pictures <laughs> from Clockwork Orange. Uh, <laughs> this is so badass you can't even see it. It's on another <laughs> level. I have no idea. I have no, no, I, no words for it, but I thought it was hilarious when I saw it. So, I, I mean, I honestly thought it was a joke. But Damn. Something else in there to, to look at. Oculus Rift, watch out. You got some competition now. <laughs> the comments wait are to, so funny. Can't wait to that gen, generation one of that that comes out. <laughs> people <laughs> people going to be going blind. There's some really funny everywhere. pictures in the comments. <clears throat> <laughs> Uh, so yeah uh think what you will about that that's really funny last thing i want to touch on and for whatever reason we didn't um talk about it but was the destiny gameplay trailer we actually saw uh gameplay you didn't see i swear we mentioned it we didn't mention it dude came out october 1st and we did not mention it yeah we we did a show that day we did we did a show but we didn't think i mentioned i was like yeah there's new destiny video on the moon i think we mentioned it we didn't talk about it though yeah, and there wasn't a lot. Of what do you, what do you want to? I thought it looked cool. Yeah, look cool, and you're on the moon. That's all you want to say about it. I, I'm, I'm not being I mean, critical. We're two weeks late. It's literally stuff they'd already shown before in the video. Oh. They, they need to yeah. do another vid doc. Like that's what I'm waiting on is another vid doc. Okay. Anyway, I, I can't wait for this game. Getting the pre-order. I think I. You can pre-order it now, can't you? Yes. To get in beta. Yeah, I'm going to do that just so I can be in beta. I want to play it with Colin. It's that Titan Tense, Polish I'm waiting on. And Sean. See, Tense, I included you right there. Didn't shy you out of that. Destiny. Definitely it's... not to have, though. Is he watching? <laughs> yeah. 
Hopefully not Dev. Just keep doing those digs. Still not me. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm pumped for both of them. We've, we've talked about that, and there's nothing new in the video. Yeah, you yeah if you haven't seen it yet, watch the Moon gameplay trailer. Yeah, make sure to watch it. But uh, that's pretty much it for this week's show. Let's take some uh, questions from the chat. I was going to show off the cool videos that I had, but I should try to get it to work while we look at questions. Well, I do. I'm not going to try to get it. I'm not going to make you guys suffer through that. What was it? Sorry. What were we doing? I was Q typing. Q&A. Q &A. Oh, we're doing Q&A? Yeah, and then we'll wrap it up the show. It's already nine. Fuck, it's nine? Yeah, dude. Wow. We went zipping by. I'm, I'm really surprised. Like, I also picked up Counter Strike Go this weekend and played like two games. What'd you think? It's fun. I played during beta, but they didn't have the competitive mode then, and the player counts are really, really low. Uh, so it was nice being able to just search for a competitive match and get into one in a couple minutes. Uh, I hopped right, <laughs> right into the five v five competitive. And stop people. It's fun. Uh, they also added the ability to spectate, similar to uh, uh, Dota, Dota, where there's just a watch tab where you can watch the top matches and players and stuff from inside the client. Pretty cool. Probably so they can start selling tickets is probably what I'm guessing is the next step, uh, similar to Dota. Uh, oh yeah, did you uh, did you follow the AGL drama? AGL three four three Halo drama, yeah. Well, them picking up Halo 3. I don't know if it's officially instead of Halo 4 or what, but they were definitely leaning towards that. The funny thing is, I saw their tweet, right? They, they made this tweet that said something like, if you want Halo 3 at the event, <laughs> give a favorite. If no, you want... if you want Halo 3, retweet. If you want Halo 4, favorite. Oh, it's an important it distinction because retweets always win those polls because you're retweeting, which means you're sharing with all your friends your preference. I thought it was the other way around. No. Okay. They're slanting everything towards Halo 3. And they believe, from watching the stream, that Halo 3 is going to give them much bigger viewer count than Halo 4. How, how could they come to that conclusion? Uh, because the diehard guys that were really big into Halo 3 are all pumped for it. Uh, which apparently is somehow thousands of people. Okay. But I have a feeling three, four, it's three nostalgia promoted? creeping into the <laughs> creeping will, into everything. Will will three four three support it? Uh, I don't know. It depends on what you mean by support. I guess. Are they going to be tweeting out the? Sh I mean, Quinn will probably tweet out the stream, but yeah, I'm sure. Are they going to be like, oh, come watch Halo Three, guys? We didn't make this game, but watch it anyway. I don't know. It's uh, I don't think it's the right decision on their parts. I, I would agree. Uh, both because I don't think that Halo 3's viewer count will necessarily be what they're expecting, which sounds like they're expecting like ten to 12,000 people to watch. It was I, the impression I got from the, uh, the live stream they did explaining the decision. I, I'm just... I, I, would, I could see if they did both. Like you have Halo 3 and then Halo 4. That's Sorry, fine. that's ten to 12,000 concurrence is what they're expecting. Because they I were saying see. that they want the numbers to... Because it's the finals... Other thing, they expect the numbers, because it's also on Halo 3, to just blow away the previous viewer counts, which I think they peaked out around 8,000, 9,000. 8, mm -hmm. So they're expecting it to blow away that. I don't know where 3,000 people or more are going to come from. Um, I, I'm just, I, I get so pissed off with competitive guys living in legacy mode, like living in the past all the time. The only group that does it well at this point because they have to is Call of Duty guys. They, they have, have to switch from, every year. They have to switch from year to year. It's a bad thing to have to do, but at least they're in that mode like we have to play the new new in order to uh, continue to get the following, continue to get the viewers because that's what company is going to be pushing. They're not going to be pushing legacy shit. It's so annoying. It's so annoying to see the same shit from competitive guys. Oh, back in my day, let me go play this game again. It was the best shit ever. Oh, God. It's fucking stupid. Fucking stupid. <laughs> just just irritates me. That's yeah. another. That's just one of those topics where I'll just rant about it and just, just go off the deep end. Thoughts Not on the it. PS4 overheat controversy? 
Didn't see anything. Yeah, I haven't. AK, I haven't seen anything. You're you're gonna have to link me to that. Yeah, I mean, I expect them probably even to sell more team passes for Halo 3, uh, strictly because they're selling them on the nostalgia factor. The point of contention I have is that I don't think that they're going to get the viewers they're expecting. Like, team passes, like, they only had, what, like 30 teams at the last Halo 4 event? So, I mean, like, to sell 30 teams for team passes isn't anything special. Uh, Red line even if they packed in, like, 100 teams for an event, I still wouldn't expect the viewers to be at 12,000. Because it's not really how it works. Like, you don't just go from having zero viewers on a game one day to 12,000 the next. Like, it's just not how it works. The, the other thing with that pot is uh, the reason that I get so upset is because they don't get any publicity from the people that they need to in order for it to continue to grow. Like, 343 is probably not going to promote this. There's not, not going to be any promotion in game. Some, yeah, I mean, you might get some retweets from, like, Quinn or whatever, but... I mean, they were promoting some of that stuff in game, right? So I mean, it's like you lose all of that by going backwards every single time. For every single community that wants to do that, for the most part, you lose out because you want to go back. I think the bigger thing is that Halo, whatever the next Halo is, is around a year out, right? So they're currently planning features for the next game, and you just kind of shunted them. <laughs> so it's like if they were considering competitive features before then now they might have to like reassess it because it's like, hey, we kind of pushed for Halo 4 competitively in the past eight months or so, uh, and then they just turned around and went back to the old stuff. So should we even focus on competitive features for the next title? Yeah, I mean, that's probably a big question. Like, we don't have a loyal following, and they're not really supporting it, so should we even invest time in those guys? I don't know. I don't know. Good question. I mean, they got Quinn, though. They got a, they got Bravo. They got all the esports guys. Ghost. So yeah, I mean, and neighbors there at QA now. I don't know if you ever saw that. Is he? Yep. Hmm. Uh, he started this month, I believe. Trying, trying to, trying to work in. Yeah, like they've got the guys over there, uh, which makes it even more dumbfounding to me that they would just switch back to Halo Three for the competitive stuff and not hold out. Ah. Wow. Guess that ricochet really turned them off, huh? Um. Uh... Let's see here. So, okay, so thoughts on the PS4 overheat controversy. Now, I didn't even know there was a controversy around this. Uh, I was really surprised, I guess, to even kind of look at this, uh, AK. The, the thing that kind of puzzles me is why there will be an outcry right now. I've seen PS4s demoed all over at all these shows, and I haven't seen any of them go out. Now, it wasn't the, you couldn't say that for E3 um, or any of the events back when the 360 was doing stuff. I mean, you get stuff red ringing all the time. <laughs> so uh, the fact that I've seen these in action, I'm, I don't know if that's really a cause for concern. I, I don't know though. I mean, they were on, you gotta think, let me see, eight and 10 hours a day, three days with different people doing different stuff. <laughs> this article is awful. It's very clearly baiting for uh for views to, yeah. to bait. Okay. I mean, like, yeah, it's, it does sound like a box uh, had a red light appear on the console uh, at a trade show while it was locked inside of a glass case. So uh, that's really all you can take from it. After that, it's just jumping to conclusions. Uh, the guy at Sony, uh, Sony's president, said that it's not a red line of death. And that was all he said. <laughs> Trying to dispel that. Real quick, uh, Flacco, hey, Arctic, Skyless, do you agree Call of Duty is a sport, the potential for a sport? I don't know. Colin, what do you think? I'd say League of Legends is more of a sport as of right now than Call of Duty. Uh, they're all about the same to me in this, this point in time. I don't really consider them sports, though. Sport. I don't think it needs to be considered a sport. I don't think that. I think that terminology is unnecessary and it blurs the actual issues. It is in the same uh, vein as poker. It, yeah, it's similar to poker, or uh, you could say like the X game stuff. Uh, X another games? Uh, direct comparison. Like I wouldn't necessarily consider. Uh, like a lot of people wouldn't consider racing a sport, 
Like it's kind of in that same group where it's stuff that's done competitively, uh, and it's people's control over machines, essentially. So I mean, I can see how it would be directly compared to NASCAR in that sense. Right. Uh, except there is a physical component to NASCAR, and there is a physical component to competitive gaming. Uh, it's more mental, though. It's <laughs> you know, it's mental drain and that kind of stuff. I just don't think that going for a sports definition is the correct approach to uh, bringing up the argument. Uh, let's see if there's any more questions. Yeah, I'm not talking about just COD. That's all of uh, competitive gaming. Yeah. Yeah, that was that was a very generalized answer. Uh, that's why I said League of Legends, Call of Duty. I mean, you can all group those together at this point in time. I'd argue uh, Call of Duty probably has the least structure of any of the major games currently. So if you want to look at it from that aspect, it's probably the least of a sport compared to Dota or League or StarCraft. Um, that that could think, be argued. I mean, because they, the, they now have the... the um, I can't even remember what it's called. The championships? No, not the championships. What's the end game thing? It's like the the ladder League from play? StarCraft. League play. Yeah, so they now have League play in there. I don't know if they do seasons or not. I stop I mean, I don't even think I played in I played a couple matches, actually. I played with you. We but it's all land. Like land is what matters. So that's in there. StarCraft stuff is very similar to that. So there's the beginnings of a structure. Yeah, there's beginnings of a structure, but it's, but it's not, it's not anywhere near level. as far along yeah, as StarCraft or Dota or League. But it's it's probably the best structured shooter right now for that. You could probably argue, sure. could probably argue Counter-Strike as being the pinnacle. At times. I mean, like, Cal and CPL was probably the best structure for yeah. that back in the day. Uh... Any more questions before we end today's show? No, no, no. Okay. All right. We'll wrap it up. Um, I, I, I had, did you see Trey <clears throat> sent me a uh, tweet no. saying, I, I told him, uh, I can't remember what I was. So I think I might have been talking about. I don't remember what game I was talking about, but some game I said I couldn't run the settings in. I might have been BF4. I couldn't run it at, at high because all the the frame rate issues or ultra or whatever. And uh, he sends me a message saying something like, "Play Planet Side Two. I dare you uh, to run it in ultra or whatever." <laughs> and so I was just thinking. I was like, so I actually looked at my Steam library and saw the last time I played <laughs> played Planet Side Two was like. I don't know, right around the time. Yeah, it was yeah. right around the time they announced it for MLG, and we were both like, that's a joke. Oh, there was one news topic that I wanted to touch on today, uh, which we didn't get to. Okay. Uh, we, we can do the quick and dirty version. Natural Selection 2, and we've talked a lot about games focusing on esports as the primary uh, component of uh, marketing. Marketing, yeah. Um, so they're having a fan-organized, crowd-funded tournament, which they're trying to do for the National Selection 2 World Championship. Uh, so it was a case of the players, a group of players contacted... Uh, what's the company? Uh, un Unknown Worlds, sorry, uh, the developers, okay. and said, hey, we'll organize the tournament, we will fund it, all we ask for is that you help us out. Uh, so they started pushing... They're asking for $30,000 in donations in order to get 24 players out to a tournament. Uh, in Europe, I guess, would be the location. So all that money will go towards flights. And then any money that isn't spent on flights will go directly to the prize pot. Uh, and the interesting thing here is that they're asking for $30,000 as a crowdfund. And, of course, Unknown Worlds is helping push it as well. Unknown Worlds does continual crowdfunding for their game in addition to that. Uh, so this is kind of like a side thing. Mm -hmm. uh, but the player counts for uh, for natural selection are really low. So it's kind of like... Uh, it's the really, I think it's the first attempt at a crowdfunded tournament. 
with a small niche player base. Uh, so I'm kind of interested to see how it goes. They're currently at $3,500 out of 30000 Is there a time limit? 30 days. So that, this just went live yesterday. Um, yeah, they can hit it. Raised... If, they can, if they maintain that pace, they can, they can hit it. Yeah, they're averaging around $90 a person currently. 45 people have donated. Huh. So we'll see. Uh, it's definitely interesting because we've talked a bit about how developer uh, crowdfunded tournaments work well because you can give cosmetic stuff uh, exactly. as rewards uh, in addition to supporting the developer directly. And in this case, it's kind of players supporting just one thing so people can watch. You know what I mean? Right. So essentially you're paying like for premium ticket prices for an online stream. Uh, so... I thought it was interesting. They're also giving away a like, trip to the finals as one of the things which you can win. Uh, so we'll, we'll see how that goes. I suspect that their community might be too small to make this happen. That's my initial impressions. Probably. Probably, but still got to keep our eyes on it. I'm going to be watching that for sure. Like, yep. uh, I see the link. If it's successful, then that could mean you could do the same thing with just about any game. Any really. game, yep. Like, the Gears community could have probably done this, I think, at its peak. Easy. Uh, the Halo community could probably do the same. Easy. Uh, they could do that easy now if they wanted to. Yeah. I mean, in, in the end, the price spot would suck, though, which would be the big contention. Because really, $30,000, if they spend 25000 towards flights and stuff, and you got a $5,000 prize spot. Yeah. Granted, everyone got there for free, so it's like, whatever. So, pretty cool. Okay. All right. Well, production value aside today, it was a good, good, <laughs> good show. Uh, oh. Thank, thank you guys for uh, tuning in. I'll probably cut out that whole piece so that way I don't have we'll to just edit it up. It'll look real nice. <laughs> It'll... Yeah, but I uh, hope you guys enjoyed <laughs> it. Uh, make sure to follow the stream. Remember, we do this every Tuesday, 9 p.m. Eastern. Uh, next week, I don't know if anything's on the horizon. I'm sure there'll be something that comes out right after the show because they always try to do that for us. We do have this pending topic which we can go to whenever for uh, top multiplayer maps. Top so. multiplayer maps. Of this gen. Yeah. So uh, we we want to get that all purdy. So we got to yeah. make sure. We might have to change the layout. Hosting the show. No, 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 no. I think I can host it if, if I get some tools to properly. <laughs> I'm going to let you host it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. But I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. And uh, we'll see you guys next week. Peace.